Hello and welcome back everyone. So today in this lecture, we will be looking into the histology of salivary glands. So let's first talk about the organization of a salivary gland and the inside of the salivary gland. So inside the salivary gland, there is an extensive network of branching ducts and all of these branches terminate into a sac-like cavity at the end. This sac-like cavity or the sac-like end piece is known as the secretory end piece and it is here where the main production of saliva takes place. These end pieces are also known as the SNI contain cells that are responsible for the production of saliva. And these cells surround a central lumen where they empty their secretion which is then carried out by these ducts. But we will discuss more on these ducts later. Let's first discuss the secretory end piece. So there are basically two types of end pieces. One is the serous end piece which consists of serous cells and the other is the mucus end piece which consists of mucus cells. So let's talk about the serous end piece first. So the serous end piece is typically spherical in shape. Each end piece consists of about 8 to 10 cells surrounding a central lumen. These cells are typically pyramidal in shape with tips of the pyramid directed towards the central lumen. So the lumen of the serous end piece has small finger like extensions that extend between the adjacent cells. These extensions are also known as the intercellular canaliculi as they are found between the adjacent cells but still located outside the cells. These intercellular canaliculi basically serve to increase the surface area of the lumen. So now let's talk about the individual serous cells. So like I've already mentioned, these cells are pyramidal in shape. They have a typical spherical nucleus which is directed basally inside the cells. They also have numerous secretory granules in which macromolecules of saliva are stored. So these secretory granules are basically formed within the Golgi complex of the serous cells. So other than these two structures, which are the nucleus and Golgi complex, serous cells also contain other typical organelles like mitochondria, lysosomes and peroxisomes. So when we have a closer look at the cell membranes of these cells, we observe that it displays an important feature that it has regular folds on it and these foldings greatly increase the surface area of the cells. And also in the cell membrane exists various cell junctions which enable the adjacent cells to be joined to one another and also to the basal lamina. So these junctions basically allow the passage of small molecules and ions between the adjacent cells. Hence, these cell junctions probably serve to coordinate the activities of all the cells within a single end piece and therefore these junctions are thought to help in creating a single functional unit. So now let's talk about the mucus end piece. So the mucus end pieces are typically tubular in shape with a cylindrical or a round type of profile in which the mucus cells surround a central lumen. The lumen is usually larger when compared with that of the serous lumen. So very important feature that exists only in the mucus end piece of major and some minor salivary glands that is that they have a small portion of serous cells that are arranged in the form of a demilune or just like a crescent of the moon. These demilune of the serous cells have a very small portion and only cover the mucus cells at the end of the tubules. So these serous cells of the demilune have the same physiology as that already discussed. And their secretion reach the lumen through intercellular craniculi which extend between the mucus cells all the way up to the serous demilune. So now back onto the mucus cells. So the mucus cells have a very important feature that is that they have accumulation of large amounts of excretory products. These excretory products are in the form of large secretory granules and appear very dark purple when viewed with the electron microscope. And because of these large granules, the nucleus along with other organelles is pushed to the basal side of the cell. So these granules are basically formed by large Golgi complexes which are also located on the basal side of the cells. So the Golgi complexes basically first give rise to small granules which eventually increase in size and join the other granules as well. So the mucus cells just like the serous cells are joined to one another by various cell junctions but they lack intercellular canaliculi that was present in the serous end piece except for the ones that have the serous demilune covering them on the top as previously discussed and if a mucus end piece lack this serous demilune it will most likely also lack the intercellular canaliculi. So this was just a brief discussion on both type of end pieces. So it is here in these end pieces where the saliva is produced and the saliva that is produced inside these end pieces is known as the primary saliva. So this saliva now passes through a series of ducts. 
So there are basically three main types of ducts that the saliva passes through before entering into the oral cavity. And we will be covering the main histological points of these ducts. So first ductal type are the intercollected ducts. So the lumen of these ducts is continuous with that of the lumen of the end piece. So therefore the overall size of the lumen of the intercollected duct is larger than that of the lumen of the end pieces. These ducts are lined by simple cuboidal epithelium and the ductal cells also have typical cellular organelles. So these intercollected ducts basically contribute macromolecules to the saliva. So these components are basically the lysozymes, the lactoferrins and also other components of unknown origin. Also present within the intercollected ducts are the undifferentiated cells that are thought to represent the salivary gland stem cells. So these cells can basically undergo differentiation to replace the damaged cells in the end pieces. So the organization of these ducts is something like this. There are several ducts that drain individual end pieces joined to form one large intercollected duct. And this duct may join once again before emptying into the next duct. So this next duct in which the intercollected duct drains the saliva is known as the striated duct. So the striated duct constitutes the largest portion of the ductal system within the lobule of the salivary gland. The ductal cells of striated duct over here are columnar in shape and their lumen is larger than that of the intercollected duct. So when we have a closer look at these ducts under the microscope, we observe that their cytoplasm, typically the basal side of their cytoplasm, exhibits faint striations and therefore they are named as the striated duct. So these ducts basically play a very important role which is the modification of the primary saliva. They do this by reabsorbing some components while excreting other. So the cytoplasm of striated ductal cells has numerous small secretory granules and vesicles that play a very important role in the modification of the primary saliva received from the intercollected duct. So now after modification, this saliva goes to the next ductal system which are the excretory ducts. These excretory ducts are located between or outside the lobules of the gland. So the excretory ducts have pseudo stratified columnar epithelium but this epithelium may become stratified when nearing the oral cavity through the main excretory duct. Occasionally along the excretory ducts are located many other cells like one of these cells are the tough cells around which nerve endings are occasionally found. Other cells include the lymphocytes, the macrophages and also other various cells. So now the saliva finally exits the gland into the oral cavity through the main excretory duct which is formed by the union of other excretory duct carrying saliva from other lobules as well. So there is one particular cell which I didn't mention previously which plays an important role in the secretion of the saliva. This group of cell is known as the myoepithelial cells. So the myoepithelial cells are basically contractile cells and therefore capable of producing self-contraction. They are associated with secretory end pieces and also with the intercollected ducts. These myoepithelial cells are basically similar in function to the smooth muscles and are in the form of stellate shape. So the function of these myoepithelial cells is very important to note. So as I've already mentioned, these cells are capable of producing self-contraction. And the contraction of these cells around the secretory end piece is thought to provide support to the end piece during active secretion of saliva which helps to expel the saliva in the ductal system. While the contraction of myoepithelial cells around the intercollected ducts shortens or widens the lumen of the ducts. But recent studies however have also revealed that these myoepithelial cells may have a more important role than just contracting. They may provide signals for maintaining cell polarity and structural organization of the end pieces and also they are found to produce a number of proteins that may have a tumor suppressing activity. So this was just a brief overview on the histology of the salivary glands. So let's just have a brief recap on what we have just discussed. So the organization of the salivary glands starts from the oral cavity as the main excretory ducts. This excretory duct progressively divides into smaller interlobular excretory ducts that eventually enter the salivary lobules. Inside the lobules, the main ductal system, which are the striated ducts, play a major role in the modification of the primary saliva. Connecting the striated ducts to the end pieces are the intercollected ducts that branch once or twice and then join the end piece, where the lumen of these intercollected ducts becomes continuous with that of the lumen of the secretory end pieces. In some glands, small extensions of the lumen known as the intracellular cliniculi may be present between the adjacent cells which may serve to increase the surface area of the lumen. So if you look at this entire formation very closely, you may notice a similarity between the bunch of the grapes 
with the grapes representing the end pieces and the branches of the grapes representing the ductal system. So for ease of understanding, salivary glands are often compared with a bunch of grapes. So this ends my lecture over here in which I have covered the important points about the histology of the salivary glands. If you still have any confusion or any questions, please do comment down below and I will try my best to answer them. As always, please take care of yourselves and I will see you people next time. Goodbye.